Welcome back to another edition of the, uh, what we've called the View from the Pew. The other day, uh, a friend of mine who was obviously overcome with the tedium that each day of this, that this pandemic brings, sent me an e email which read, Until further notice, the days of the week are to be called this day, that day, the other day, someday, yesterday, today, and next day. It kind of reminds me of that movie, Groundhog Day. Uh, you might recall the movie with Bill Murray, where the uh, fellow was living the same day over and over and over again. <laughs> kind of reminds me of a, of a song that I remember as a kid. It was on the radio. It went something like this. I won't sing it, but it's uh, the words are still in my mind. It said, the sun comes up and the sun goes down and the hands of the clock go round and round. You no sooner get up and it's time to lay down. Life gets tedious, <laughs> don't it? And I guess at this point, you know, um, many who are not working on the front lines of essential services uh, uh, may begin to look at that each day begins to look like every other day. Um, blending together so that uh, uh, we may have to consult a, a calendar to see what day of the month it is or, or even what day of the week it is. In this uh, hiatus period, time seems to be indeed slowing down almost to a standstill. And it caused me to reflect that time is indeed something that all of us human beings experience. Although we might be hard pressed to define it, yet we all live and exist within it. And we measure it with watches, clocks, calendars and dates. But besides experiencing time as a kind of a chronological reality, there's also another manner in which time is experienced. In the book of Ecclesiastes from the Old Testament, it relates, for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. Time to be born, and time to die, Time to plant, time to harvest what has been planted. Time to mourn, and a time to laugh, and so on. Time, in this case, represents an opportunity, an occasion, if you will, an encounter or an experience that profoundly affects us, over which we have little or no command and control. Some even refer to it as God's time. So there is a time that we can call our own, and there is God's time. And we live in both. And though they are not separate times, but really two dimensions of our life and time, the one admittedly um, occupies the surface of our lives, our daily activities. The other, God's time, seems like a deep undercurrent. So deep, in fact, that we often forget about it until it erupts and throws our calendars into total chaos. Something like what this pandemic has done. But there are other events, too, along this line. Some of us remember 9-11 or maybe the Humboldt Broncos bus crash of two years ago, or even what's happened in Nova Scotia with the mass killings that occurred earlier this week. That's not to say that God does these things to punish us. It's just the way that life unfolds, both in its beauty and in its darkest hours. So right now, we are kind of experiencing a, an, a hiatus in time. But it's not dead time, nor is it wasted time. 
but maybe an opportunity to ponder things that are familiar until they become unfamiliar. That is to say, to ponder life's realities a little bit more deeply and simply to be present to them. I recall one old timer making the comment, you know, sometimes I sit and thinks, and other times I just sit. <laughs> I think that's a wonderful way to define the art of contemplation. Just being present to one's surroundings and one's environment without any actions, any words or any thoughts where time indeed just seems to stand still. You know, perhaps the gospel reading for this uh, Sunday uh, has something to relate to us in that way as well. Recall the story of the two disciples on the way to Emmaus after Christ's crucifixion in Jerusalem and um, how they were so preoccupied with what the happenings in Jerusalem and also preoccupied with getting to Emmaus, their destination before dark, that they really weren't paying that much close attention to the stranger who was walking with them until they invited him to stay with them, to have a meal with him. And, uh, and it was then that they recognized him. Yes, time indeed has stopped, at least really slowed down for us. Maybe almost to the point where we have lost track of time, but maybe it's also given us the opportunity to spend on God's side, uh, side of time and discover more contemplative dimensions in our own life. James Finley, who's a psychologist and who spent quite a number of years in the Trappist Monastery of Gethsemane in Kentucky, and who had been mentored by the contemplative and writer Thomas Merton, would always begin a contemplative prayer session with words from Psalm 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. And he would repeat that line a number of times, each time removing a word. So I would like to end this reflection by inviting you to enter into a few moments of contemplation, to allow time to stand still for you for a few moments. If you can, isolate yourself from any outward sounds or noise. Find a comfortable chair. Sit with your hands on your laps and your feet flat on the floor. And if you wish, close your eyes and listen to the words of the psalmist. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know. Be still.